everyone. Thank you so much for pressing play. So today, what I wanted to talk about is meditation. So this week, I've been thinking about that a lot, right? What the world says meditation is compared to what the Bible says meditation is. According to the world, meditation is emptying yourself, right? Just letting everything out and just feeling nothing, trying to just empty yourself, right? And as I was reading God's word, I realized that biblical meditation is opposite from that. It's not about emptying ourselves. It's about putting God's word in to our minds, into our hearts, right? Renewing our spirit in him, right? By reading his word, by praying for him to continue to grow us and change. And so I wanted to share scripture on meditation. Psalms 1-2, all of Psalms 1, by the way, is awesome. You should read it. But Psalms 1-2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Then Psalms 19-14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Psalms 119.15 says, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Colossians 3.16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. As I read from all these scriptures, we can see the importance of God's word. We need it. It's our sword. It's our weapon. It's what encourages us. It's what convicts us. It's what corrects us. It's what molds us. And so I started to think about it and I was like, wow, as Christians, it's so easy for that whole worldly meditation to come into the Christian community, right? You know, I've even heard people say they would label quiet time or time with God um, as time where you could just journal everything that's on your heart and whatever comes out is from God. Oh, the God must have put it there and that's why you're journaling it. That's why you're writing it down. And that is super dangerous. Like our hearts, like the Bible says, are deceitful, right? So we have to always make sure, you know, we are sinful by nature. We have to make sure, like it says in Acts 17, the Bereans, what did they do? They eagerly heard the word and, you know, they were excited to hear the word, but they made sure that what they heard aligned with what the scripture said. May we do the same thing. And then I thought about Ephesians 6, 17, the sword, it says the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Our daily battle in this world should be fought by the word of God, right? Because we know that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Um, right? And if you haven't read that before, I recommend you reading Ephesians 6. I wanted to read something by George Mueller real quick where he says, I saw more clearly than ever that the first great and primary business to which I ought to attend every day was to have my soul happy in the Lord. For I might seek to set the truth before the unconverted. I might seek to benefit believers. I might seek to relieve the distress. I might in other ways seek to behave myself as it becomes a child of God in this world and yet not being happy in the Lord not being nourished and strengthened in my inner man day by day all this might not be attended to in a right spirit right we may have these good desires to serve others or like even with me to do this blog right may my desire be Lord as I study his word, not just, Lord, I want to teach this to people, but Lord, I want you to mold me, right? I want, you know, I don't want to just talk the talk. I want to walk the walk. Please change my heart. Please continue to mold me. Right? And so I started to think about just that quiet time with the Lord. And what I've been doing in the mornings has been praying and studying a portion of scripture, at least one chapter in the Bible, right? And so I will start off with prayer and for me it's easy for me to jot down what I want to pray for so that I can stay on task because my mind will go from place to place so I jot that down and then as I jot things down I think about certain scriptures that might pop up in my head or you know things that maybe I'm struggling with and scriptures that have been encouraging me I'll write that down and then I'll just pray and share my heart with the Lord and um Pray for all the people that I've wrote down that were on my heart. Pray for different struggles I may have, you know, all of that. And then pray for the Lord to give me understanding as I study his word. And then I'll open up the word. I'll read a chapter. And then as I'm reading, I realize that it brings me back to prayer a lot of the times because it's like, wow, Lord wow, this is like, let's say I'm reading something and I'm like, let's say it's something about the Pharisees. And I'm like, wow, Lord, oh, 
I've seen that in me before. Like, please, may I never be judgmental or any of these things. May I be humble like the tax collector. You know, the, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. May I be humble like this tax collector. And then something that has really helped me and what I thought about this week was about Jesus, right? Jesus went away to desolate areas to pray, right, to the Father. And then so we may see that and we're like, well, Jesus went to pray. And then what I think about is, yes, he went to pray, right? He would pray, he would fast, spend one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord, commune with the Lord. But then what I realized is in Luke 4 and Matthew 4, when the devil came to tempt him, the devil tried to use scripture, but Jesus knew scripture better than him, obviously, because he's Jesus. But that's an example for us. Like he knew the scripture better than him that when the devil said, oh, but God says, God's word says this. Jesus was like, yeah, but his word also says this, you know, and then they were going back and forth. And, you know, I was just like, wow, like he knew God's word. May we know God's word. Right. And so it just showed me the importance of just knowing God's word and adding that to our quiet time with God. There's nothing wrong with journaling. There's nothing wrong with, um, you know, sitting down and sharing everything that's on your heart with the Lord. We're called to pray without ceasing. We're called to, you know, he will um, carry our burdens. We could share whatever we want with him and we should, we should do that. But equally, as we pray, we should also study God's word because studying God's word helps us when we're praying, right? It helps us know what to pray. It helps us realign our hearts to know what God's will is. And so God's word is super important. May we, as we study God's word, pray. As we pray, study God's word. I fall into both sides where all I did was pray, 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 and not had God's word. And then where all I did was have God's word and not seek the Lord. We need both. We need to study God's word and as we study God's word we need the Lord to give us understanding on what his word means and so I wanted to close with uh, another snippet by George Mueller um, and I'm gonna have this on my website George Mueller actually has a website and I know I've mentioned him in the past his writings have blessed me so much he's from late 1800s or mid 1800s something like that <laughs> but anyway he said, the first thing I did after having asked in a few words the Lord's blessing upon his precious word was to begin to meditate on the word of God, searching as it were into every verse to get blessing out of it. Not for the sake of the public ministry of the word, not for the sake of preaching on what I had meditated upon, but for the sake of obtaining food for my soul. The result I have found to be almost invariably this, that after a very few minutes, my soul has been led to confession or to thanksgiving or to intercession or to supplication so that though I did not as it were give to prayer but to meditation yet it turned almost immediately more or less to prayer he goes on to say as the outward man is not fit for work for any length of time except we take food and as this is one of the first things we do in the morning, so it should be with the inner man. We should take food for that, as everyone must allow. Now, what is the food for the inner man? Not prayer, but the word of God. And here again, not the simple reading of the word of God, so that it only passes through our minds, just as water runs through a pipe, but considering what we read, pondering over it and applying it to our hearts like one of the older women in my life who I love so much she's blessed me so much she says it she she calls it chewing on the word right it's like we're chewing on God's word we're not just reading it and goes through one, one ear and out the other but like really chewing on it praying about it Lord what does your word what does this mean give me understanding help me know who you are as I study your scripture help me know who you are Lord God, help me know what you are calling me to do as a Christian and who you are calling me to be and all of that. So yeah, I pray that all that I'm learning this week would bless someone and that we would all see the importance of God's word and pray for the Lord to continue to give us understanding as we study. So thank you so, so much for pressing play. Bye.